Like love, dislike happens at first sight. It's also gratuitous, maybe this feeling arises at the level of chemical elements. I work in a chain of hypermarkets, middle management. Under my command, there's no staff. I contact mainly with the external environment and what happens inside the hypermarket almost does not concern me. Therefore, the publicity of my relationship with the saleswoman Tina I thought that I was not afraid. I did not advertise, of course, but also did not hide much. She is not my subordinate but everyone already knew that we had been together for a year and were planning a wedding. Not that anyone was particularly interested in it, but girls are such girls. Tina once told a colleague in confidence then told another colleague in confidence, then told another colleague, then told another colleague, then told another colleague then told another colleague, 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 then told another colleague then told another colleague then told another colleague, then told another colleague, then told another colleague, then told another colleague. I think if it were not for my fiancé's incontinence of speech, our relationship would have remained unobvious for a long time. She comes to work before me for an hour and leaves early. Tina is pretty, both her face and her figure are good. Our relationship was always good. We never fought and we had sex almost every night. And then we had Keith. He got a job as a warehouse worker, loading, and unloading, taking goods out to the hall. At first glance, an ordinary guy, ordinary face, athletic, a head taller than me and much broader in the shoulders, and he was very hungry for women. Very soon, it became known that he was hitting on almost all the girls and women in the store, flirting away, and very successfully. This could be judged by the way one or another sales girl started to spend more time with him to leave work together with him. And after a while, Suddenly everything ended and all communication between Keith and his girlfriend was abruptly cut off. It wouldn't have bothered me, and I wouldn't have paid any attention to it if it hadn't been for the fact that Keith immediately disliked me. He was in the habit of picking on me every chance he got on and off. Cause confrontation, but when he made jokes and quips in the presence of other people, I always felt uncomfortable, and as I know, Many people do word in solitude, I would find witty answers that I would have shamed him with if I had said them in the same place. But these witty answers came to my mind much later. He could say on seeing my polished shoes that it seems that the only physical exercise I can do is to bend over with a cobbler's brush. He could make a passing joke about my taste in music, causing my colleagues to laugh approvingly, and what can I say? Once when I was on the phone, shuffling from foot to foot, he blurted out in front of the sales girls that if I really wanted to go to the toilet and was afraid I wouldn't make it. Adult diapers were in the hygiene department. And all the girls around him giggled even Tina. Damn it, I must be slow with it, not once did it occur to me to respond to him in a dignified manner. Thank God, I didn't try to respond. There's nothing more ridiculous and pathetic than trying to seriously respond to veiled teasing. I began to avoid crossing him, and if he got in my way, I tried to change direction to go around. I think he realized that in any case, he started to get caught in unexpected places and his nasty jokes were no longer avoided. And then he found out about my relationship with Tina, I noticed him talking to her a few times when there were no customers and he was wheeling a cart of merchandise out into the hall. He was visibly joking and flirting and Tina left and twirled a curl with her fingers just like she used to do when we first started talking to her. Tina, I said to her that night we need to talk, and I told her about the covert bullying that Keith was doing about his reputation as a womanizer about the fact that he seemed to have his sights set on her. I spoke frankly and hope very much for understanding. Tina, I told her I'm asking you to stop all communication with him. You may think I'm paranoid but I sense that he intends to do something nasty. Don't think I don't trust you. No. I love you, and I trust you completely. But Keith, do you know? He seduced several girls from our store already. I guess it's a sport for him, baby. Come on, my fiancé looked at me pitifully. I love you and I won't let him take any liberties. Don't even think about it. She said that, 
and I should have calmed down, but I thought it would be best to tell her that she wouldn't talk to him at all and tell him why. The next day, I was walking down the main avenue of the store and saw Tina and Keith they were standing pretty far away from her department. He was saying something to her and she was giggling. I know sign language, not thoroughly, but I've learned some of the poses and just in marketing books. Her posture was open. The toes of her shoes were invitingly turned up. Her shoulders were visibly back, clearly showing off her already large breasts. And she held the wrist of the other hand with one hand showing him the palm of her hand. There was a decent distance between them. But at that moment, I realized that she was no longer mine. Her posture could be described in one short word. Yes. I didn't let it show I walked on by. I saw them talking three more times the day, all three times in different parts of the sales floor, but each time far from her department. There was no overt action, no movement, no hugging, much less kissing, just talking. But each time her postures expressed explicit prior consent, how did I observe them? I just came into the security room with a premium bag of chips bought at our own store. I told the guard that I mixed up the flavor, bought a huge bag, and now I don't know what to do with it, and I thought I saw him eating the chips. The guard excitedly confirmed that he really liked chips. I gave him the open packet and as if in between said that I was preparing a marketing campaign and would like to see the behavior of customers. He gratefully allowed me to enter the observation room several times, and I repeatedly, entering, pretending with a clever look that I was writing something down on my smartphone, watch Tina, and Keith, it was all of her gone conclusion. No. I tried to talk to Tina again that evening, but the conversation ended almost immediately after she blatantly lied to me about not talking to Keith today. I didn't know what to say anymore. I could say that I'd seen them that she'd lied. But what good would it do? The line hadn't been crossed yet, and if I told her everything I knew, it might make her more cunning. There was a small chance she'd still resist so I kept my mouth shut. I just waited faintly hoping for that chance. Not that I was spying on Tina yeah, I did a little spying when she left for work an hour earlier than me in the morning. I'd run into the store, go to security, mention, and passing the research on customer behavior in the early hours and watch Tina or Keith on the monitors. I also tried to surround her with special care and attention and love and talked a lot about the upcoming wedding, the future, well, at least I tried. She didn't come home from work on Saturday or at least when I got home an hour after she was supposed to, she was gone. Just a text message about going out with her friends late at night. Basically, I figured it out. There was no proof, of course, but somehow I knew right away. And then there was proof. Keith sent it to me in the form of a link to a video in his cloud. Hey, we'll watch this video later and remember the good times I heard his voice. Come on, give me a smudgy smucky, and she smilingly raised two fingers in the shape of the letter V and then stretched out her lips in a kissing motion, although she didn't seem to know that her lover was going to send the video to someone. It looked like she was showing it to me. It was over. I mean between me and her and they were still going at it. As embarrassing as it is to admit, I couldn't tear myself away from the spectacle and watch to the end. So I heard his panting voice. Am I better than him? Better, she answered with a laugh. Tomorrow, I'll see you at work. We'll have time before he comes. It's dangerous at work. She tried to object, but he slapped her lightly on the cheek and said, I'll decide when and where I have you you're my girl. Now it was a strange feeling. I was terribly hurt and somehow ashamed. I opened the closet and started shoveling out her clothes. About an hour later, I brought three boxes and a bag of her things to her parents' house, unloaded them at the door, rang the doorbell, and quickly ran for cover, waited for the door to open and leaving her surprised father to look at the things hurried away. I returned home took out the bottle of gin she'd given me months ago and hadn't drunk and was about to uncorch it. But suddenly, a funny plan occurred to me. Keith would be grinning in my face at work in the morning hoping that I wouldn't dare to admit publicly that I'd become a cuckold, much less pick a fight with him, and he'll probably brag about his victory to a couple of his colleagues maybe even show them the video. And behind my back, 
there will be whispers and giggles both from those to whom he'll present the evidence and from those who will enjoy the rumors, so where does that leave me? Quit and go far away, but I had a plan in my head. I turned off the phone, turned off the door, locked the door, and went to bed with revised earplugs in my ear so I didn't hear the knock on the door when she came back or her screams. I didn't even know how long she had been trying to get into the apartment. And then the neighbors told me that her hysterics at the door lasted more than an hour until she went somewhere, and I didn't care where she spent the night. In the morning, I arrived at work leaving my car a block away just in case. Enter the hall with a paper bag and immediately met Keith who was predictably waiting for me surrounded by several of his fellow loaders and saleswomen. They were all looking at me curiously, some mockingly, some sympathetically, but curiosity was evident in their gazes and I lived up to their expectations. Keith, I thought I gave a rather natural portrayal of joy. Thank you. You helped me out. This is for you. Drink it. You can even drink it with my ex. I smiled widely taking the bottle out of the bag. Hey. It's not from our store. I brought it from home. Everyone's a witness, Keith. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how long I've been hesitating to break up with her but my conscience has been bothering me. How can I? She doesn't give me a reason. If I tell her now that I don't like her anymore, that I'm sick of her, I'll think I'm such in. And when I realized that you were hitting on her, I was so afraid to scare you off. I pretended not to notice. I was afraid that you'd figure out my intentions and wouldn't want to be an obedient executor of my plan. But you did a great job. You did a great job. What? He slammed his eyes shut. What are you talking about? What plan? Well, I pretended to be surprised. You really didn't guess, are you really so clueless? Of word that you didn't understand why I didn't try to stop your affair. Keith darling, I've wanted to break up with her for a long time. You know that, don't you? She was out of my league as they say. We were living together but I felt like Michael Jordan playing against a backyard team and I wanted to run away, but I didn't want to look like him, not in her eyes, but in the eyes of the people around me and even hear all of you. I glanced around at the crowd of onlookers. Would think I was like that. And now I have the perfect excuse to break up an eye. I've already done it and you helped me do it. I looked around at the audience who were eager to hear what was going on. Did you hear that? I'm breaking up with her because she cheated on me and no one dares to call me in and an autocrat. I'm not getting rid of her for no reason. There was laughter, and the girls started to discuss what had happened. And I noticed that partner who was standing next to Keith was holding his phone in his hand. It had a distinctive themed case and on the screen was the video that Keith had sent me yesterday. Oh, by the way, I exclaimed, did everyone watch the video? Let me see. I took Jack's cell phone and the guy let it out of my hand. Now you have to see this. I felt a lot of excitement and trembling in my hands when I clicked on the icon in the folder. My fingers were not very obedient. I didn't realize that I had highlighted many files at once. I highlighted sent to all contacts in the menu that popped up and clicked OK. Now now I mumbled trying to pass the time and looking at the rotating loading circle. It's ready. Oh. I think I clicked the wrong thing, I said. Now it's right and I clicked play. Per Keith, in one minute, his triumph had become a farce. What's more after I had done what I had done, I suddenly realized that along with the video of my fiancé turning from my say to my ex-fiancé, other video files had been sent to all of Keith's contacts and who knows what was in them. I was holding Keith's phone in my hand showing the video to everyone and everyone was staring at it avidly. When suddenly I heard several shrieks almost simultaneously, did you send the video to all your contacts with horror in her voice shouted one of the sales girls looking at her phone. All of them in my husband foo, another girl moaned after her and mine. The five girls were hysterical a minute later, cursing at me and Keith. It all made sense. In this folder in his cloud, Keith kept other videos similar to the one that was playing for all the colleagues present which were filmed his other passions among them, married ones. Uh, Keith turned out to be a catcher as they say did not miss a single skirt. 
The most interesting thing was that by the nature of his work, he had contacts with almost all the employees of the store and even some members of their families. And at these very minutes, these family members could already be watching the video and be unpleasantly surprised to learn something new about their wives and daughters. But even if not everyone had seen the videos, there would surely have been someone to notify them. I didn't see my ex until around lunchtime. She was pale and her eyes were red. When I met her eyes, I saw horror in them. I think it wasn't horror at me. I think it was horror at the whole thing. Everyone shunned her. Only a couple of the women who were hysterical about the videos sent to their husbands talked to her about something. The next day, Keith didn't go to work. And by lunchtime, the rumor was that he'd been beaten up badly by some hooligans very badly and he might not come back to work after he got out of the hospital. Broken limbs take a long time to heal and several saleswomen went to work with a thick layer of makeup on their faces. The makeup could not hide the deep sadness on their faces enhanced by the